Again, as Paul said, as the sun set this evening, May the 1st, it is the 21st day of the Omer. Baruch atal Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kichanu bimitzvotav vitzivano asifrat haomer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us to count the Omer. Quarantine. A quarantine is a restriction on the movement of people who have been exposed to a communicable disease but do not have a confirmed medical diagnosis. It is distinct from medical isolation in which those confirmed to be infected with a communicable disease are isolated from the healthy population. The concept of quarantine has been known since biblical times. Quarantine has been practiced throughout history around the globe. Citizens of Israel who were asymptomatic with impurities were to come before the priest in the temple or the Mishkan who then inspected the individual for numerous and various afflictions and impurities. There's a reference in Leviticus 13. Actually, it's got numerous references in here, but I'm only going to share a few of them. Leviticus 13, verse 4 says, If a bright spot on the skin is white, but it does not appear to go deep into the skin, and its hair has not turned white, then the Kohen is to isolate, kagar, which means isolate, quarantine, and prison, to shut him in for seven days. At the end of that seven days, if they come back and it's still in the same condition, there's to be another seven-day isolation. And we see a more descriptive reference in verse 46 of Leviticus 13 that says, As long as he has sores, he will be unclean. Since he is unclean, he must live in isolation. He must live outside the camp, quarantined. The entire camp isn't quarantined or isolated. The infected person is. And of course, I'm referencing our current nationwide, even international quarantine and lockdown. It's unbiblical. Our First Amendment right to assemble and freedom of speech are being trampled upon. I shared a profound video last week, posted on social media, mailed it around to a few sources from two California doctors who are practicing immunologists who gave a differing opinion regarding this lockdown and quarantine based upon sound, solid research. Their video was banned. It was removed from social media. Listen, they weren't calling for protest, revolt, or violence. They weren't cussing. This wasn't pornography. They were holding a press conference and gave a, gave a scientific differing point of view, and they were silenced. I'm not questioning the danger and the highly contagious aspect of coronavirus. We're pained. We're saddened by the death. But the current cur cure is worse than the virus. Sweden, this has been very controversial, Sweden has not engaged in a quarantine lockdown, unlike the U.S., yet they're experiencing the same casualty rate as the U.S., we're not reacting biblically to this pandemic. Listen, the first several weeks of lockdown, it was a supernatural respite, don't get me wrong. A time with almost all distractions removed, allowing us to clearly hear Adonai. It was a time of drawing closer to him. This Selah moment was a heavenly gift that we could cease from our works and press into Adonai, press into his presence. It was a time of unrestricted trust in him. The Lord was speaking clearly to Rebitzin, to her first, confirmed it to me that we weren't to take this SBA PPP loan. I just got a document two days ago that said there's all kinds of strings attached to this now, and that it's, it's not a grant, most of, most of it must be paid back, and that those who received it will be put on a Google database and it will be made public, not that that made any difference to us. But you just have to know when something's coming from the government, it's not free and unrestricted. There's strings attached. This has been a time of unrestricted trust in him, a time to properly align ourselves with Adonai and his kingdom, a time of repentance and purification and holiness so that we may receive his deepest revelation and wisdom unlike any other time before. But this wisdom and revelation is only being revealed to those who are Shema, who are listening, to those who are truly seeking Adonai, pressing into his presence, and ministering unto him. I shared this uh, in a Facebook Live this week. As Psalm 91 begins, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God. This is the hidden place, the place of intimate 
and sacred relationship with Adonai. A place where he speaks to us and we listen. A place where we see him and do what he does. A place where we hear him and say what he says. A great shaking, as I've been sharing habitually, has begun. The restoration of all things has started. <laughs> but ironically, few are listening. Jeremiah chapter 6 begins with a rebuke upon Jerusalem for their evil and wickedness without repenting. And Adonai calls Jerusalem to receive correction. And Jeremiah gave advice that directly speaks to us today. In Jeremiah 6, starting in verse 15, it says, They should be ashamed of their detestable deeds. But they're not ashamed at all. They don't know how to blush, kalam in the Hebrew, which means blush, how to be ashamed, how to be humbled. Therefore, when others fall, they too will fall. When I punish them, they will stumble, says Adonai. And here's what Adonai says, stand at the crossroads and look and ask about the ancient paths. Which one is the good way? Take it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not take it. Listen, we have ancient paths ministries here with Craig Hill and Family Foundations. It's one of the most powerful things we do in, in covenant relationship with him and getting rid of the baggage that we carry around and getting rid of curses and afflictions and sin. And we use this all the time. Take the ancient paths, the way that is good, take it. But here in this case, Scripture, you read this all the way through, they said, we will not take it. The Lord says, here's a path to take, and they say, no, we're refusing that path. And as a nation, we too are at a crossroads. This lockdown time should have been a time of inner reflection and soul-seeking and repentance, of drawing, of returning, following the ancient paths to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. We should be ashamed of our detestable deeds. We should be ashamed of the immorality of this country. We should be ashamed of the sin and the wickedness, of the lies, the deceit, the abortions, the murder. We should be ashamed of our detestable deeds. But most of the nation, it isn't. And now that others have fallen, and all the nations are infected, so are we. And we've stumbled at our, under Adonai's punishment. Our economy is tanking. More people unemployed now than in our history, even more so than the Greatest Depression. As Yeshua warned in Matthew 24, our love has grown cold from increased distance from Torah. We don't know the word. According to Leviticus 13, the sick are quarantined, not the healthy. I can go to Walmart, to Lowe's right now, and have a very difficult time finding a parking space. The stores are filled with hundreds, even thousands of shoppers, yet we can't gather with social distancing to worship Adonai. Abortion clinics are considered essential, but our right to assemble and worship isn't. Alcohol stores are open, but you can't get a haircut. National quarantine is unscriptural. Now we're hearing reports of our food supply possibly collapsing, bringing even greater hysteria and fear and anxiety to this nation from two companies, Tyson's and Smithfield Pork, who are ironically owned by who? Chinese-owned corporations. Both of those were purchased by China. Communist propaganda. Meanwhile, our freedoms are being systematically infringed upon. And though we needed the say law, the pause, we also need to stand for truth and submit in fear unto Adonai. In Isaiah 29, starting at verse 13, then Adonai said, Because these people approach me with empty words, and the honor they bestow on me is mere lip service, while in fact they have distanced their hearts from me. And their fear of me is just a mitzvah of human origin. Therefore, I will have to keep shocking these people with astounding and amazing things. Pele, in, in Hebrew, it means a wonderful, marvel, amazing thing or God's act of judgment until the wisdom of their wise ones vanish and the discernment of their discerning ones is hidden away. America hasn't turned back unto Adonai, so he will continue to astound us with what? His judgment to humble us so that we will obey and trust him. There are certain times and situations and experiences in your life that the greatest act of trust is not to run to God for a miracle. Rather, the greatest act of trust is to make a stand 
because it reveals the trust in whom you serve. One of the most profound examples of this was displayed by three young Jewish men in diaspora in a foreign land under King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. In Daniel 3, starting at verse 12, the king received a report. There are some Jews whom you have put in charge of the affairs of the province of Babel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these men, your majesty, have paid no attention to you. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the gold statue you set up. Now see, here's the king, Nebuchadnezzar, who had done great victories, military champion of the Middle East, a world superpower, and he didn't give credit to the God of Israel who put him in that place. He began to think, I must be a god, and made a statue of himself and commanded the nation to kneel and bow before the statue of him in supplication. And these three young men refused to do it. Verse 13, in a raging fury, the king's not happy. Everyone's doing this but these three. Nebuchadnezzar ordered the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. And when the men had been brought before the king, verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you neither serve my gods nor worship the gold statue I set up? He said in verse 15, all right then, if you are prepared, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the harp, the zither, the lute, the bagpipe, and the rest of the musical instruments. See, this was worship. Oh, how idolatry becomes worship. False gods, false idols. So when the music begins, are you prepared to fall down, verse 15, and worship the gold statue? Very well. But if you won't worship, you will immediately be thrown into a blazing hot furnace, and what God will save you from my power then? Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, and this is one of my favorite passages in Scripture, your question doesn't require an answer from us. Your majesty, if our God, whom we serve, is able to save us, he will save us from the blazing hot furnace and from your power. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will neither serve your gods nor worship the gold statue which you have set up. Staring death in the face, clearly the edict of the king would be carried out. In a great boldness, they take a stand. We will not bow down before your gods or statue of you. In fact, your question to us doesn't even require an answer from us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego expressed the purest, most powerful form of trust in God. They assured Nebuchadnezzar that they were confident that God was able to save them. They didn't cave into fear, or hysteria, anxiety, or peer pressure, or bow to the statue to save their lives. They didn't fear the king's power. They didn't plead and cry to Nebuchadnezzar for mercy. They didn't state their case biblically or attempt to prove their point through apologetics. They walked in such a powerful trust and intimacy with Adonai that they didn't even need to pray to God for a miraculous divine intervention. They already knew the answer. Did you catch that? They didn't pray for a miracle or deliverance. They didn't beseech God, oh, here we are, get me out of this mess. They stood their ground confident in who they served, standing upon his covenant word and promises even unto death. And why? Because it says back in Devarim, Deuteronomy 5, starting in verse 8, you are not to make for yourselves a carved image or any kind of representation of anything in heaven, above, on the earth beneath, or in the water below the shoreline. You are not to bow down to them or serve them, for I, Adonai, your God, am a jealous God. In Exodus, he says his name is jealous, punishing the children for the sins of the parents, also the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. There are certain principles and situations in life more important than dying. Mordecai is another example in his refusal to bow down before Haman, even though that was the law of the land. It's a spirit and strong. Now, remember, Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, they succumbed to Persia, and Haman was dealing with the Persian king, Xerxes, and Haman, the, there's a spirit that hovers over the region in this area. We're still dealing with this today. It's the Persian stronghold. 
Adonai is more than able to deliver us and save us from COVID-19. And even if he doesn't, we won't bow down to unscriptural and unconstitutional edicts or proclamations. We lock down and quarantine to save lives, yet abortion clinics remain open. We're saving lives and murdering at the same time. Yeshua said in Matthew 7 that a good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. The word is crystal clear here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have to consult Adonai in their situation. They intimately knew Adonai. They knew his word, and they were living it. They were walking it out in their lives. There is a time to be bold, courageous, and to make a stand based on the foundational truth of God's word. And I've heard this, listen, we were cautious in the beginning. We didn't know what we were getting into. But now as the facts are being revealed, this is way out of line. How many will come back and say, well, you know, the word says, obey the leaders appointed over you. Do what they say. Romans 13, I've, I've had this sent to me a couple of times. But may I remind you that a Nazi-compliant European church stood silent as the death trains passed their doorsteps filled with our people heading to the death camps. How many would board a train just like that today if they were told the government was taking them to a COVID-19 free camp to be isolated? How many would get on that train today out of fear, panic, and hysteria? Unthinking compliance is never the answer. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, it says, Be alert, stand firm, and trust. Be men of courage. Be strong. This concept and understanding is the very foundation of America. Listen, in the military, as a 22-year naval veteran, we were trained and taught not to follow unethical or immoral orders. This is what the Nazis claimed, who were working at death camps. All they were doing was following orders. And we learned from the Nuremberg trials that unethical, immoral orders are not to be followed. In January 30th, 1787, in a letter to James Madison, Thomas Jefferson stated this in Latin, Malo periculosum libertatum quam quitam servitutem. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. Thomas Jefferson also stated, and this is very profound, I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Not throwing caution to the wind this Shabbat. We know, I know COVID-19 is extremely infectious. It's critically dangerous to the elderly and those of any age who have a pre-existing medical condition. When it first started, if we met as a congregation, we were callous and not caring for the sheep. Or if we canceled services, we had no trust in Adonai. It was a lose-lose situation. Erring on the side of caution and not knowing what was exactly going to unfold, we agreed to submit and went to live stream services just six weeks ago. However, as we move forward, and again, these two California doctors who had their video removed from social media confirmed what I shared last Shabbat. Out of 100 people who contract COVID-19, 94 recover. That's astounding, 94 recovered. Of the six that die, over 90% of those six had comorbidities. They have multiple pre-existing medical conditions. Type 2 diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and a whole host of other asthma, uh, lung emphysema from smoking. There are an incredibly few number of people who have died who are healthy, but those numbers are infinitesimally small. With social distancing, routine hand washing, and sanitizing, there's no reason for a continued nationwide quarantine and lockdown. The data to keep America closed and Americans quarantined simply doesn't exist. And now, I'm going to quote an article from the Washington Times last Tuesday, the 27th, I'm sorry, the 28th, and, the report, and he was talking about these two doctors in California, and here's what the reporter said. In fact, COVID-19 will go down as one of, the world's one of the political world's biggest, most shamefully overblown, overhyped, overly and irrationally inflated and outright deceptively flawed response to a health matter in American history. One that was uh, carried largely on the lips of medical professionals 
who have no business running a national economy or a government. If one is high risk, we have to have common sense here. If you're high risk, use more restrictive precautions. Stay at home. But it's the right and the freedom of every individual to decide for themselves to stay in or go out. Yeshua himself said in Luke 12, verse 57, why don't you decide for yourselves what is the right course to follow? There's two profound points for us to understand this evening. The first one is people are easily enslaved. In a time of severe famine and a pandemic, the citizens of Egypt gave Joseph the dreamer their money, their land, their livestock, and even themselves as slaves to survive. They went on to say in Genesis 47, verse 25, they replied, you have saved our lives. So if it pleases my Lord, we will be Pharaoh's slaves. Hasetan, he doesn't want you to trust in that or not. He doesn't want you tithing and praying and reading your word and drawing into that secret place with him. He wants you to be frightened, scared, and a panic, and desperate to stay right where you're at, to stay enslaved. He wants you trapped into poverty, into depression, into despair, into unforgiveness, bitterness, disbelief. He wants us divided. He wants you dependent on the government. Hasetan knows what most believers don't. A force wins by dividing and conquering the other force. Divided, the people and enslave them to dependency, and they become impotent, apathetic, powerless, spiritually dead, no longer a threat. And let me remind you, since it's still not that long ago that we were celebrating Pesach, what did a redeemed Israel we just saw 10 supernatural signs and wonders, divine intervention of the God of Israel intervening in the affairs of men and coming against the gods of Egypt, including the death of the firstborn of all the land of Egypt, to bring us to freedom. Then against the Sea of Suf, we saw Moses raise his hands and Adonai send a mighty east wind, and we crossed this water body on dry land. And we watched the waters close in and destroy the world's superpower with all these chariots. The world's mightiest army slayed in one stroke of a wave. And we saw the largest miracle ever recorded. Six million plus people whose clothes never wore out. Not one among them was infirm. And we took with us the entire riches of the land of Egypt. And what did we say? This enslaved people that had just experienced all this divine intervention, these supernatural signs and wonders, what did we say? It would have been better to stay a slave in Egypt than to starve to death in the desert. Huh. It's so easy to be entrapped into slavery. Number two, we must fight for our freedom because those in power, tyrants aren't willing to let you go. Power corrupts. God made a promise to Abraham, he confirmed it to Isaac. He made it a law with Yaakov. All the land between the Nile and the Euphrates rivers belongs to Israel. He raised up Israel in Egypt, released us from slavery, and after 230 years of this, through supernatural signs and wonders, God sustained us in the desert. For 40 years, Moshe died, and God raised up another. And we have the Joshua generation, and God reaffirms his promise with Joshua, Yehoshua, in chapter 1, starting at verse 3, he says, I'm giving you every place you will step on with the sole of your foot, as I said to Moshe. All the land from the desert and the Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittite, and on to the great sea in the west will be your territory. No one will be able to withstand you as long as you live. Just as I was with Moshe, so I will be with you, and I will neither fail you nor abandon you. Be strong and be bold. Be strong and be bold. Chazachamaz. Be bold and be strong. This is a time and a season for boldness and strength. For you will cause this people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers that I would give them. Only what? Be strong and very bold in taking care to follow all the Torah, which Moshe, my servant, ordered you to follow. Do not turn from another to the right or to the left, then you will succeed wherever you go. 
the basis of our success stands upon obedience to the Word of God. Again, in Matthew, for years this has been heavy on my heart. Narrow is the gate. Narrow is the path to life, and few find it. Wide is the path of deception on either side of that gate. And God's telling Jehoshua here, stick to the Word. Follow it. Don't veer to the right or to the left. Then you will succeed in whatever you do. He says in verse 8, yes, keep this book of the Torah on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. It's not just reading it. I recommend you read it out loud. There's something about it coming from the very soul of a person and coming right back to your ears. You hear it, you see it, you read it, you become immersed in it. The Word is our answer. Keep this book of the Torah on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will take care to act according to everything written in it. Then your undertakings will prosper and you will succeed. Haven't I ordered you, Kazakamats, be strong, be bold? So don't be afraid or downhearted because that your eye, your God is with you wherever you go. The same God that was with Yehoshua, wherever he went, he's with you and I. The same God that caused them to take the entire promised land, it wasn't given to them, they had to fight for it. They had to fight for it. If something's given to you, it's got strings attached or it's worthless. Anything of value, we must fight for. We must stand in the gap for. Israel had to fight, but God promised us the land, but we had to fight for it. Follow the word. Live Torah. Be bold. Be strong. Trust an enemy, and your enemies won't stand before you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. A thousand will fall at one side, ten thousand at the other. God granted us the promised land, but it wouldn't come to us on a silver platter. He's promised us freedom, but it's not coming on a silver platter. Freedom must be earned. You have to fight for it. We have to stand for justice, for liberty. We have to wait upon truth. We serve a sovereign God who's more than able. Let me say that again. We serve a sovereign God who's more than able. With him, all things are possible. The enemy wants to silence the voice of the body of Messiah. We've been specifically targeted in this. There's many states that are going through, and specifically even in Kentucky, I read an article that they're actually taking Bibles out of churches so they won't convene and go there. Why? Because the enemy wants to silence our voice. And why is that? I'm going to tell you, here's a supernatural mystery from this Shabbat's message. Ha-Satan knows we're on the cusp of a major sovereign move of God. He knows we're nano, nanograms away from revival. He knows that we're about to see the greatest apostolic move of God in 2,000 years. He knows the John 17 moment is about to pass. He knows the Romans 11 moment is upon us, life from the dead, that the world will know. He knows this. And he will do everything in his power to silence the voice of the body of Messiah, to divide us, to separate us, to make us fight and argue against each other. But he's a liar. Read the end of the book. We win. We win. The end of the book says we win. And we will rule with Yeshua forever. So we must be bold and strong and stand for truth. We will not be silent. You know, Psalms 107 contains a phrase in there that's incredibly powerful. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Psalms 107 verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from the power of the foe, it's time for us to rise up in this hour in strength and boldness, kazakamats. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you the redeemed of the Lord? Then say so. Then stand in the gap and speak truth and life into this situation, into this nation. Speak revival to Israel, the land, and the people. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now is the hour and now is the time. It's not time for meekness and fear, but for courage and strength. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Father, right now in Yeshua's name, I'm praying for a restoration in your body. I'm praying for leaders to rise up in this hour like the mighty men of David, men of renown, men of character and integrity and truth. 
men who were courageous, men who would go through the gates to get a cup of water from Bethlehem in the midst of a battle. Men of fortitude, men of power. Let the body arise. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let us get our voice back in this nation that we will be the social influence upon this nation. Not Washington, not the UN, but the body of Messiah. Father, we're decreeing and prophesied from the Eastern Gate this Shabbat to return to purity, to holiness, to righteousness, O oh God. That you, God of Israel, will send your glory here through the Eastern Gate to take this nation back unto you. We're, we're decreeing right now an end to lockdown, an end to quarantine. Father, you've given us wisdom and truth to move forward. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we thank you, Father, it's a sign of your covenant power in these end days. Your word says before we were born, all of our days were recorded. Not one of us will live here more than a second than you decreed before we were born. Father, draw us into that secret place. Let us hear your voice unlike any other time before and reveal the profound hidden wisdom and truth of your kingdom and what you're doing in this hour. Speak to us, O oh God, that we, the redeemed of you, may say so. We seal this tonight right now by the blood of our Messiah, your Son, and we give it to you, Abba Father, the Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Shabbat Shalom.